So today we are going to be looking at the School of the Spirit, part one. We're going to be looking at how to get result. <clears throat> how to get results with the power of God. We've heard about the power of God, and the Bible tells us in the book of um, in the First Corinthians chapter four, verse twenty, the Bible makes us to understand that the kingdom of God is not in words, is not in the talking. It is in demonstration of the power of God. The kingdom of God is not in words, but it is in power. So you must, you must hold or wield the power of God. If you don't have it, your Christianity will not amount to anything. The kingdom of God is not about talking. You have to carry the power of God because that is what it is about. And the, the, the Christianity that is void of the power is useless, is meaningless. You're, gonna, you're not going to do anything out with it. It's not going to profit you. So we have a lot of professing Christians who don't know we... The power of God is not functional. They don't even, they just keep living their life anyhow. They fall victim and victim fall upon them and all kinds of things are happening. You need to know how to carry the power of God, how to disseminate the power of God, how to utilize the power of God. So in doing that, I said there are three stages involved in the release of the power of God. There are three stages. If you want to release, you want to have result through the power of God. If you want to see the power of God at work in your life, there are three stages that are involved. Like I said the other day, the first stage is a generation stage. The first stage is generation. You've got to know how to generate the power of God. Just like we have electricity, you know, the electricity, this electricity that you are seeing here today, that is, although this one is a generator, but when you have electricity, the first thing is that they first of all have to generate that electricity. We, I think, is in Kainji Dam. I don't know whether we are still using hydro um, power. Okay, so they generate it first in that Kainji Dam. And then there is a, it's not just enough to have it generated there. If it's generated, you cannot transmit it, it's of no use. So the next stage is to transmit that power. So that is why you see all those high tension wires that crisscross the whole country, nation of Nigeria. Okay? Have you seen those high tension wires? Okay. So that is for transmission. They transmit, it comes from direct from Kainjidan and all of that. And you cannot take light from there. So there is another transformer, another transformer that steps it down and then brings it to your home. So you have power generation, you have power transmission, and then you have power distribution. So these are the three stages. The same thing applies in knowing how to transmit the power of God in your life. So, I said trans, uh, generation, how do you generate the power of God? There are three entities or there are three elements that are involved in generating the power of God. They are, one, the gospel. One is the gospel. The second is Jesus. The name of Jesus the third is the word of God. Now, Jesus, the name of God, uh, I mean the name of Jesus Christ, the word of God, and the gospel, all these three are talking about one and the same thing. What about the gospel? In Romans chapter 1 verse 16, the Bible says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ 
because it is the power of God unto salvation. Okay? So, the gospel is the power. That is, that is how you generate the power of God. You have to generate it through the gospel. Another way you generate it is uh, the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23, but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. Verse 24, and he says, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God. Have you seen it? Christ, the power of God. The first one is the gospel, the power of God. This one is Christ, the power of God. And then when you look at Hebrew chapter 4, verse 12, the Bible says, in Hebrew chapter 4, verse 12, the Bible says, for the word of God is quick and what? Powerful. So you see three entities that are used to generate the power of God. They are saying the same thing. Because, for example, the Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. You see, word and God. And then in verse 12, he say, and the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. And that word is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the word of God. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelation that the Jesus is the word of God. So they are all talking about the same thing. So when you talk about the gospel, the gospel is expressed. The gospel is expressed or, or transmitted through the word. It's the word. So you have to, so what it means is that, number one, you have to understand the gospel. And then you have to understand, you have to know and believe in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three is that you have to study to show yourself approved, a right to work man, not being ashamed of himself, but rightly dividing the word of truth. So all these three are saying the same thing. And that is how you generate the power of God in your life. Now, the, the, the major thing that holds these three together is the gospel. Because Jesus Christ is about the gospel. What Jesus Christ came to give us is the gospel. And the word is about the gospel. You preach the gospel. So the message that works is a message of the gospel. So you must understand what the gospel is. Because that is where the inherent power is. Now, see... Everything, all the provisions of God from the beginning to the end uh, covers every aspect of your life. Every aspect of human needs. And anything that God will ever provide for man and all of that, they are all packaged in the gospel. Outside of the gospel, you can't get anything. Outside of the gospel, you cannot get anything from God. The gospel is a content. is a container that holds everything about your well-being, everything about the life after death and all of that. Jesus Christ is about the gospel. Is that clear? So the problem now with the gospel is that a lot of people are ashamed. And a lot of people are ashamed. That is the impedance. The problem that we have with the gospel is that number one is that many people don't understand the message of the gospel. Number two, so many people are, are ashamed to preach the gospel. That is why Paul said, I am not ashamed. And in Mark chapter 8, verse 38, Jesus said, If you are ashamed of me in this perverse and adulterous generation. So a lot of people are afraid or ashamed to preach the gospel. So that is why you cannot. So even when you understand that gospel, Preaching it now is another thing. Confronting people with the message of the gospel. So, number one, you have to understand how to generate the power of God. First, starts with uh, the gospel. You have to understand the message of the gospel. And of course, if you read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter, five, uh, chapter 15, verse, um, verse 1 to 3. He said, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also you have received and wherein you stand. Verse 2. He said, By which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preach 
unto you, unless you have believed in vain. In verse 3, he said, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I received, how that Jesus Christ, or Christ, died for our sins according to the scriptures. And verse 4 says, He and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. This is what the gospel is. The gospel is about the message about the death of Jesus Christ. He died for your sin. He was buried and the third day he rose again from it. That's the, this thing as it is. That is where the, the, the power of God resides. So when you talk about the message that works in any generation is a message of the gospel. If you are preaching, you can be preaching any other thing around and all of that. It can, but it's, it's neither here nor there. But if you, want, if you want to see the power of God showcase, you will see the preaching of the God. Everywhere, read the whole of the Acts of Apostles, all the miracles that you've seen. It's all about the gospel. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15, he said, Go ye into the world and preach the gospel. Whosoever believeth and the baptized shall be saved. And but whosoever does not believe is condemned or damned. But he said, But this sign shall follow them that believe. And then in verse 19, uh, verse 18, he said, And after Jesus finished speaking to them, and they went and began to preach. And then God was confirming their messages with signs and wonders and miracles. Is the gospel they were preaching. Is that okay? All right. So I said the impedance or impediment is uh, a lot of some people are afraid. Jesus, I mean, God said to Jeremiah, do not be afraid because he said, go and preach to them and all of that. And then Jeremiah said, how can I do that? But I am a child. And then God began to reprove him and said, do not say that you are a child and do not be afraid of them. And I've told you about shame. A lot of people are ashamed of the gospel, preaching the gospel because it doesn't, it, the message of the gospel is not palatable. The message of the gospel you, is not is not the way we try to package it so that it will be acceptable to the people. That's why it lacks the power. The message of the gospel is very confrontational. It is not. It doesn't appeal to people. If you package it in such a way that it will appeal to people, you will lose the essence. The power of God will. You won't see anything. And if you look at the life of Jesus Christ, that is it. And then John the Baptist and the rest of them, just take all of them. The message of the gospel has to be presented the way it is raw. It doesn't. Okay, the second one I said is transmission. How do you transmit the power of God? How do you, now that you, have, you know how to generate the power of God, how do you transmit? Now, transmission, the agent, the vehicle that carries it is the name of Jesus Christ. The vehicle that carries the power. He said, the word that I speak to you is spirit and life. There's life in the word. That word of God has, so you carry it. It's just like, um, it's just like somebody has some goods that are in a, um, in, uh, uh, maybe at our papa. They have some goods in our papa there and all of that. That goods are likened to be the power. You generated, you have the goods and all of that. Now, how do you carry it? Because that goods can be there, but you can't use it because, but it, because you need to bring those goods to this place. So you now need a vehicle, a vehicle, a car, a bus, a truck. That truck is, the, is likened to the word of, I mean, the name of Jesus Christ. Because everything is contained. All the authority and power and dominion and all of that is invested in the name. So that is when, when, you, when you now have the gospel, when you understand the gospel and you want to preach it, when you are preaching it, when you finish preaching, as, uh, as you are preaching it, you are preaching in the name of Jesus Christ. And when you want to deliver it, you deliver it in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, the name of Jesus Christ is what carries that gospel. Is it translated? So what it means is that you must know the name of Jesus Christ. You must understand the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Paul said in Acts of Apostles chapter 3 verse 16, when he, he got that miracle at the gate called beautiful, that lame man and all of that. And so they were looking at him and say, ah, they, they thought he was a ghost or another being from another planet. And 
Paul now said, and his name, through faith in his name that had made this man strong. You see, it is the name of God. It is faith in the name. That is why I said you have to know the name of Jesus Christ. You have to know who Jesus Christ is. We've talked about in the name of Jesus Christ, how he got that his name. So you go back again and study it. That's why you say, well, that's why I said you have to do study. If you want to carry the power of God, you are going to stand out in your generation. If not, you just be, you just be a, 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 a freelance Christian. Nothing to show for it. You are just a good person. You are just a nice person. You are just a quiet person. You know, you don't find anybody's problem or trouble and all of that. It doesn't make you anything. As far as God is concerned, you are, you are a minus in his kingdom. Because you are, you are created, God who gave you life and all of that, saved you, so that you can be an agent that transmits his glory. So, the challenge that we have in the transmission, let's look at the Philippians chapter 2 verse 9. In Philippians chapter 2 verse 9, he said, Wherefore God had exalted him, and giving him a name that is above all names. Have you seen it? Give him a name that is above all names. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, of things in earth, and of things under the earth. Have you seen it? It is in the name of Jesus Christ. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15, again he says, Go ye to the world and preach the gospel. Whosoever believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But whosoever believeth not shall be damned. And this sign shall follow them that believe. He now said, in my what? Name. So you see the gospel preached, but the vehicle that carries it, the, the vehicle that carries that power, the, the gospel is the power of God. The word of God is the power of God. Jesus Christ himself is the power. So the vehicle that carries it is the name of Jesus Christ. That's why he said, in my name, you shall cast out devil. In my name, you shall heal the sick. You lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. And all of that, everything is in the name of Jesus Christ. And God has given him a name that is above all names. Is that clear? So you need to go back again and study the name of Jesus Christ. How did he get, how powerful, what is the authority and the power behind that name? To what extent can he deliver and all of that? You have to know the content of that name, the authority that is behind that name. So when you have the gospel, load yourself with the gospel message and then you will know the power of God, I mean the name of Jesus Christ, the authority and the power that is in that name, you are good to go. Then the next one is, um, the problem we have in this particular transmission is a lack of faith in that name. Because we talk about impediment, impediment. The, the impediment we have in this case now is lack of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. In other words, lack of faith in his name. So you need to know what that name stands for. Then the third way, the third means is power distribution. That is, this is what makes it now. You have loaded yourself with the power and you transmitted that power. You want to transmit. Because, you see, it is not as though, um, you know, the three are working together at the same time. They are, they are, they are one side or, one, or three sides of the same coin. They are working together at the same time. Just like when you talk about the gifts of the Spirit. It's not as though this one will start, then this one will end, another one will start. They are all together working. But, you know, at any particular time, this one can switch over to this one, and this one switch over to this one, and all of that. It's a network. So, that's how it works. So, in this case now, you have the distribution what is the means of that distribution? How do you distribute the power of God so that it, it can produce the effect that you can now see? So that it can produce that result. You can now see that result. You can now pray, you say, in Jesus' name, be healed. And that person finally gets healed. And that miracle finally takes place. What exactly do you need to do? 
what is involved in distribution now is the Holy Spirit. John chapter 16 verse 13. John 16 13. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that he, that shall he do what? Speak. And he will show you things to come. You see, the reality, the Holy Spirit is the reality. And then the next verse. 14. He shall glorify me for he shall receive. Have you seen it? He shall receive of mine. Who is the mind there? Who is the mind there? Jesus Christ. Have you seen it? There? So Jesus is the transmitter. But the distributor is the Holy Spirit. He said he's going to come and take from him. And then give it to you. Reality. You will experience it. Is the Holy Spirit that has to do it. So, if you, if you don't, if you neglect the Holy Spirit, you can generate that power, you can transmit that power, but you can't distribute it. It's the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 15, verse 19. Through mighty signs and what? Wonders. By the power of what? The Spirit of God. So that from Jerusalem and round about Ilicum. He said, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. He said, through the mighty power of the Spirit. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And what happened? And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And then God spoke. Now, God already is the generator. God is himself is the generator. He is the power. But he needed the word, Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is the creator. All things were made by him, and without him was nothing made that was made. So Jesus is the creator. That's the word of God. So, but he needed the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, that is the reason why when you are saying something, when you are speaking, when you are pronouncing, when you are prophesying, when you are decreeing without the, the Holy Spirit involved, that thing is not going to produce results. That's why you say somebody is blowing a hot air. You can be shouting and screaming and all of that and saying all kinds of things. It's, it's void of the Spirit. If the Spirit is not there, it will not transmit. It will not distribute that word you are saying. It will not make it, it will not bring it to a reality in the life of the person. That's why you can stand and preach the gospel and preach. When you finish preaching, people are looking at you. Lives are not being changed. Because the one that changes life, the one that changes, that makes that change is the Holy Spirit. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, in verse 18, he said, verse 18, but we all with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even by what? The Spirit of the Lord is the one. He is the one that makes that ultimate change. He is the distributor of the power of God. The one that generates the power of God is, a, is in the gospel. Because everything you see in the Bible here is about the gospel. Everything points at Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the gospel is the power of God. And so we communicate that power of God through the word, which is Jesus Christ. And then you make a reality, you bring that word into a reality in the life of people or you bring it to the target point where you want that thing to 
rest, where you want that thing to act on. So it is the Holy Spirit that makes it possible. Without the Holy Spirit, it cannot happen. And so we look at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, the Bible says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of what? The Spirit, which is what? The Word of God. So have you seen it? The Word of God is the sword which the Holy Spirit uses. That Word of God is Jesus Christ. So you preach that word in the name of Jesus Christ. So Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes to confirm everything that we have said in the name of Jesus Christ. So he said, whatever you do, do in the name of Jesus. You preach in the name of Jesus. You do whatever it is in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what Colossians chapter 3, verse 17 and 18 says. He said, whatsoever you do in words or in it, do it in the name of Jesus Christ. So when you, Jesus Christ is the, is what? The vehicle, the transmitter of the power of God. And so the Holy Spirit is the one that makes the distribution. He said, I'm, I'm going to come, when the Holy Spirit comes, I will, he will take from me and then give it to you. He will show you the things to come. It's not Jesus Christ that is going to show you. It's the Holy Spirit that will show you. So you need the Holy Spirit. And so, the Bible says in Acts of Apostles chapter 10, verse 38, how that God anointed Jesus Christ with what? With Holy Ghost and with power, not just the Holy Ghost. It's with power. So the power here again is speaking about the, ve the vehicle. So you see, in order for you to transmit the power of God, you must know how to generate the power of God. And how you generate the power of God is through the preaching of the gospel. You must preach the gospel. The gospel that is not preached does not have power. If you don't preach, if you as a Christian, you don't go to preach and preach the gospel, you are not going to experience the power of God. You are not going to experience the gift of the Spirit, the gift of the Holy Ghost, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the working of miracles, the gift of healings and all. You will not see it in your life until you preach the gospel. And as you are preaching it, you are preaching in the name of Jesus Christ. And then the Holy Spirit again is whom you must know to be able to carry that power. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4, he says, And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of what? The Spirit and the power. It's the Holy Spirit that makes that power reality, a reality. Without the Holy Spirit, that power will still be trapped. And like I said, that is why you need to maintain a spirit-filled life. If you don't maintain a spirit, spirit, Holy Ghost-filled life, because he is the one that makes the distribution. If you don't maintain a spirit-filled life, you can't make, you can't distribute. You can, you can study the Bible, study the gospel, Read all your Bible, all that you want to read. When you finish reading it and you don't talk about it, faith without works is dead. After finish reading it and all of that, generating the power and then you keep your mouth shut. And all, that's why you will lack the power. You will, the Bible says, ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of truth. And having a form of godliness, but the power they deny. So he said from such people, turn away from them. Don't have anything to do with them. But they don't have life. They can't. We have so many Christians everywhere, scattered all over the globe, everywhere. No power, no, they, they are just dry, just empty. That's why the, if somebody has a problem now, the next thing that will, the next thing that will come out of your mouth is to go to hospital, is to call the police is to look for who will help or you need to so call somebody and all of that. That is always, that is what is it. But it ought not, because the Bible said that I am my children who God has given us. 
are for signs and wonders. Is any, any among you sick? What did he say? Should you go to the hospital? So, but what do we do? We go to the hospital. Why do we choose the hospital? Because we lack power. And sometimes you pray, you pray, you say, you lay hands and all of that and pray. You say, let's believe God and all of that. You're believing God. You are not full. The Holy Spirit is not present. The Holy Ghost cannot be present and you pray and you will not get results. So that's why you lay hands. And even when you say you lay hands, you don't lay empty hands. There is, tr- there is a transmission. There is life. There is a life that is going through that your hand. It's not an empty hand. You have to, you, so that's why you need to maintain a spirit-filled life. So, if you want to do that, you have to maintain fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It's a must, it's compulsory. How do you maintain fellowship with the Holy Spirit? Jude chapter 1 verse 20. How do you maintain fellowship with the Holy Spirit? Jude chapter 1 verse 20. But ye beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith. Doing what? Doing what? Praying in the Holy Ghost. After you have generated the power, after you have had the knowledge and understanding about the name of Jesus Christ, then you go into prayer. It is through prayer now you release You distribute it. You start distributing. So when you finish loading yourself now, you are full of the Holy Ghost. And then a situation comes to you. And then you come across any particular challenge and all of that. That's why when you speak, when you speak, because the Holy Spirit is there, you are full of the Holy Spirit. And then you speak. You hear the you see in the Bible in all the Acts of Apostles, and Peter being full of the Holy Spirit, and he spoke. Is that clear? How may we generate and carry the power of God? Let me tell you something. Are you listening? This tree is a must. You cannot leave one and hold on to one. You can't do one. You can't pray. You can't just be praying without studying your Bible. It will not work. Remember Ephesians 6, 17. The sword of the spirit, which is what? The word of God. So what we are going to be praying is the word. If you don't have the word, he said, let the word of God dwell in your heart richly by faith. And then out of the abundance of that word in your mouth, in your heart, you communicate it with your mouth in prayer. So you see, if you are the type that you are so busy, you are so occupied, with the cares of this life, with the deceitfulness of riches. If you are the type that is encumbered by so many, you don't even have time to yourself, you are void, you are void of the life of God. You might be a Christian, or you might be born again, but you are dry. That is why at the slightest challenge or problem, even when you must have you say you want to pray, you see pray, nothing will happen. You communicate through the name of Jesus Christ. You transmit it. But what you are transmitting, you have to first of all have it. If you don't have it, you cannot transmit it. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit, why you are transmitting? It's just like somebody, that, that, very, that goods that is in, a, maybe there is petrol. You need petrol to put inside your car and all of that. Somebody now went and bought petrol for you. But your car is empty, you can't do anything and all of that. So you are waiting. The petrol is the one that gives the power to the car to move. But you don't have the petrol. The petrol is in a papa. So you need a vehicle. The petrol now is a power. You need a vehicle now to carry that petrol 
to this place or the diesel to this place so we can power the generator. But now, the, 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 the vehicle that is going to carry it is not a vehicle, which is the name of Jesus Christ. Now, if you have the, if you have the fuel or the diesel and then you have the, the vehicle, so the driver now, the driver that is going to drive that vehicle is the Holy Ghost. Is the one that is going to drive it all the way and come and park the car with the diesel in front of the generator. And then you now distribute it inside the generator. So these three must be there. Because if you have the fuel, but there is no car to carry it, you cannot use it. If you have the fuel and you have the car, but no driver to drive the car, it will still be there. It will still be no useful to you until these three are complete. Stop being lazy. Did you hear what I said? You didn't hear me. You know, I will tell you the truth and I will not lie to you. I will tell you the truth I will not lie to you. We are lazy. Spiritually lazy. You know what is lazy? We are spiritually lazy. Lazy. This book, you know, sometimes you just, you know, you know what you call night vision. Night vision says spirit to spirit or flesh to flesh or whatever. To, night vision, you sit down, you study this book through the night. 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 o'clock, you are still reading this book, studying it. You are loading, you are, you, you are, what are you doing now? You are generating energy, power. And when you finish, then, in the name of Jesus, or through the name of Jesus, you go into prayer. You will study, you must pray. If you do only study without praying, you are wasting your time. Hello, that is why when the time comes, you, you are faced with challenges, you are faced with problems, you are faced with trouble. You can't solve it. Then you start looking for who to help you. Meanwhile, you carry the power loaded. The Holy Ghost is there the distributor. But he cannot function without the word because he had the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. He cannot function without the word. So you need to lay hold on the word. And what we are told to do, where the see, where the power of God is, where the power of God is, is in the preaching of the gospel. Not in any other thing. It's in the preaching of the gospel. That is the assignment we are given. That's where the power of God is. The gospel. If you don't preach the gospel, you cannot see. If you, that is why you can spend 25 hours talking in tongues. When you finish talking in tongues for 25 hours in a day, you finish and all of that, you are still empty. I say you are still empty. You don't become a fanatic. That's why you see everything. You see demon in everything. See spirit in everything. See, and all those whatever. At the end of the day, you are just neither here nor there. You see the preaching of the gospel? You must do it. Whatever that is fighting you not to preach the gospel and all of that is either out of ignorance or out of lack of knowledge and understanding, or that you are afraid, or that you are ashamed. Your own, you must, find, you, you must be either, the reason why you don't preach the gospel is either one of these, or all of these, or a combination of these. Either ignorance, or lack of knowledge, or fear 
or shame. You are shame. Give me First Corinthians chapter one, verse twenty, or uh, verse eighteen. Let's start. You see, what does he say? For the preaching of the cross, that is the gospel, is what? Is foolishness. You look like a fool. You look like a fool. Can you imagine you come to somebody now and say, let me share the word of God with you. And let me... The person will look at you from the head to toe. And then you are going to be, you don't want to offend the person. You don't just want to. And even when you want to pray, you see all this thing that we, you see, see eh? you see all this thing that you, you just want to package the gospel. You know, make it look cozy in a way that they will, they will accept it. That is why it's not changing anybody's life. Because they are not born again. There is no life of the spirit inside that thing. The gospel is confrontation now. The gospel is... I read for you, Acts of Apostle, the men that turned their world upside down. He said, these people have come to trouble the city and all of that. And the other guy, they, they went after Paul. Why are they fighting? The, why are they doing all those things? He stood before King Agrippa and all of that. Why did they arrest him? Why did they want to prosecute him and all of that? It's because of the message of the gospel. You want to say it in a way that, you know, you are talking to the elites, you know, to the people, you know, the high and mighty. You need to, you need to, you know, know your status and all that before you come and do. You lack. You must preach the gospel that Jesus Christ died for your sin. You must know that you are a sinner. There is nothing good about you. Before somebody will be born again, let me tell you, that's why there are so many, many everywhere. I was reading today in, the, uh, in Luke chapter 12. Somebody asked Jesus Christ, are there many that shall be saved? He said they grow, they narrow gate. They narrow gate, there are few. He said many are pressing, but only few will find it. The gospel is confrontational. Because the, me the method that we have, you see, technology and this 21st century approach and all of that have taken the power of God away from. The, we don't preach the gospel again. You can stand here then telling people how that God has helped you, how that God has blessed you, how that God has helped you do X, Y, Z. And that. That's not the gospel. That's not the gospel. Because you must know that you must know that you are a sinner. Until you know that you are a sinner. The Bible says when the Holy Ghost comes, he will convict men of what? Sin. He will reprove them of sin. He will convict you of sin. If that conviction does not come, you can't be born again. 